And right now, the railway is fairly clear of vegetation and obstacles. But that's going to change in about a mile and a half from now, when I anticipate I'm going to be going through some really thick broom. And soon, the broom is going to be a problem in the middle of the track. So this will be fun. I just have to work my way through it. Yeah, this is nice. Actually, this is better than I remember it from, from two years ago. This is where I pick up faint hope that perhaps the broom has been cut a bit. It's kind of funny that the status of the broom weeds is the subject for my dramatic video opening. But hey, that's the reality on Vancouver Island. So here's the big picture location for my hike, Vancouver Island on the west coast of British Columbia. And the red dot is just north of the city of Port Alberni. And here's the railway map showing the two subdivisions of the ENN railway. The yellow squares are mileposts. And the red circle is the area of my hike. Here's a close-in view of the railway map, and I've outlined the railway in black. The green part is the spur up to McLean Mill National Historic Site. And this is where I start my hike, and it's also where I end it. The first 600 meters are alongside Smith Road as I walk towards the level crossing of the main line. And here's the extent of my walking on the railway from milepost 33.3 at Smith Road over to about 29.9 at the trestle. To me, this is an interesting part of the railway route because it leaves Port Alberni going seemingly in the wrong direction, but that's to lengthen the line in order to lessen the grade as it works uphill towards the Alberni summit. So the dramatic big corner seen at the top of this map is one of my favorite parts of the hike. The curved timber frame trestle at mile 29.9 is the end goal of my hike. After exploring below the trestle, I walk down the steep bank beside the creek, back to the log train trail and McLean Mill. It's 8.30 a.m. on a foggy morning in Port Alberni, and I'm starting up my hike at McLean Mill National Historic Site. The first 600 meters of my walk is going to be along Smith Road. Right here is the McLean Mill Spur going into the mill property. I don't think there's been a train through here since 2018. And here's where the spur crosses Smith Road. It's one of those damp fog mornings in the Alberni Valley. I can feel it on my face. And here's where the mill spur leaves. It goes into the woods, down a steep hill to join the main line. And I continue on towards the main line via the road. And here's the ENN main line crossing Smith Road, mile 33.3 the start of my railway hike. I'm not going that way. The mill spur comes out just down the end of that straight stretch. I'm going this way. Geographically, I'm going north now. And uh, railway wise, I'm going east because this is the railway heading to Parksville, eastward. Somewhere along here on the right was the mile post for mile 33. It's been gone for a few years. This is a long tangent, very long, for the Alberni subdivision. The tangent is 0 0.9 miles long. On the left is an area that was logged a few years ago. We'll be passing a few of those places today. And right now, the railway is fairly clear of vegetation and obstacles. And now the trees are starting to close in on the rail line. 
nice and pretty in autumn. The green with the autumn leaves on the rails. This is the first time in two years that I've been here. And uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what has changed, if anything, just because of the passage of time. It's good to be back in places that are a bit familiar. Looking back down the straight stretch that I've come from, and I've still got a ways to go on this tangent before the first curve. Here's the first curve in a rock cut, and somewhere around here, I think during the ENN steam years, was some sort of a incident with a train. So I'll dig out my Robert Turner book and give you a voiceover. This was in 1941, and it was the Pusher steam locomotive, number 3245, that had the problem here. A side rod had broken, and this flailed around, causing other rods to break, and eventually one of the driving wheels was sheared off. On the next day, the maintenance crew found the sheared off wheel here, in this rock cut. That was the end of that locomotive. I like this rock cut area and we're doing our curve to the right which is going to put us in a direct line towards the Beaufort slope and break out into a bit of a logged off area soon. Oh yeah, I love this spot. Fog over a logged off clearing through these woods. We might not be able to see the Beaufort slope when I come around the corner. Hey, fog does that. Yeah, it is a foggy morning. I like that we still have a lot of autumn leaves, a few on the trees, lots on the ground. So both sides of the tracks have seen recent logging, opened it up. When trees were planted here, they got a bunch of white tubes protecting the young trees. I like it, it kind of has a cemetery look to it. So let's continue. About mile 32, going towards the Beaufort Slope. Here's a 2019 photograph showing the mile 32 signpost when it existed. That was the first and last time that I saw it here. In this area around mile 32, there were a few spur tracks for the Bainbridge Lumber Company. Continuing this straight stretch tangent. I'm continuing my enjoyment of it. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Coming up on the left is what I want to say used to be, this is where I go from memory. Um, a lot of times it's just easier to do a voice over when I'm editing the video. Around here is mile 31.7, and that's where the Bainbridge station was. And here was a siding, and also an interchange track to the Alberni Pacific Lumber Railway. And you can see evidence of what used to be the siding, or the interchange track, or both, here on the left in what is now an ATV trail. The power of video editing. It's easier to walk on the remnants of the siding or whatever this was. So this is a good time and place to talk about APL, Alberni Pacific Lumber. Mile 31.5 in the middle of the big curve. That curve is coming up in just a bit is where the Alberni Pacific Lumber Company's railway underpassed the ENN. For the ENN, this underpass structure was originally a long timber frame trestle, 946 feet, 
That's when the Alberni Pacific Lumber Company had a railway going underneath. Then in 1962, the crossing was reduced to a 64-foot timber pile trestle, and that's when the Alberni Pacific Lumber Company switched it from a railway to a truck road crossing underneath the ENN. The final change to this underpass situation was it being completely filled in with no trestle, and that's when the Alberni Pacific Lumber Route became the Log Train Trail, a recreational trail. And down here to the left is where you can get down to the northward part of the Log Train Trail. Down there. And down to the right is where you can get down to the southward part of the Log Train Trail. And now we're walking on what used to be a trestle. We're also walking in the big uh, hairpin curve on this ENN route where we're going to start going southward along the Beaufort Slope, picking up elevation. So lots is happening route-wise around here. So down below on the left you can see an old bit of rail and that would have been used as, I'll use the wrong term, but a bit of rebar or something to stabilize the filled in area because underneath here would have been the route of Alberni Pacific Lumber. The underpass was right here. What a lovely area. Here's a few photo views looking back where I came from and looking where I'm going. Nice. So I think this is about mile 31.5 or so. The mileage is counting down because we are headed towards Parksville, the start of the Port Alberni subdivision. And again, this is the steady curve, <laughs> the hairpin curve. I'll show you the map. This is all for the purpose of the route gaining elevation slowly as it leaves the Alberni Valley, climbing up to the Alberni summit. For all of the ENN railway on Vancouver Island, this is one of the most obvious areas where the route is designed to slowly gain elevation. And this is very pretty here as well. <laughs> it's always fun when you're in a continuous curve like this. <laughs> the curve never ends. So you never see that much in front of you. That's where we're coming from. Yeah. One long curve. And looking up, we've got the low cloud over the Beaufort slope. Here's a trail crossing going up. Crosses here. Goes down. There's a YouTuber, Mr. Speed, who does a lot of hiking in this area with his blue healer dogs. And I think he uses that trail a lot. That's the good healthy sound of autumn. Oh, right beside the railway there. And again, I'm going to say I'm very thankful that the broom is not a problem yet, nor the tree overgrowth. <laughs> I'll just keep accepting this with thanks. Thanks to the good people who cut these things back. This is nice. Still in the big curve. Again, looking behind, it's just curve hidden by the overgrowth.
this is gorgeous this is nice looking back again at where I came from because I'm finally breaking out of the curve yes a tangent section ahead so we're through the hairpin Here's an example of good work done by good people. There's the cut off broom. Would have been really thick and it's been cut. So thank you to the good people that do that. It's the good people that use this corridor for recreation purposes. Probably with ATVs, they can pack a chainsaw. I'm so thankful for them keeping this free of obstacles. This is so nice. I've mentioned before that I've got a thing for railway mile posts. They are a visible example that this route is still owned and held as a railway. I think railway signage is important. So that's the backgrounder for my approach to the area where the mile 31 post should be. The last time I was here, two years ago, the post was leaning badly and I did a bit of work to right it up a bit. I will soon find out if the post still exists. Well, this is where I conclude that the mile post is not up anymore, not visible. Makes sense. It was pretty loose. Things get knocked over and uh, you know what? <laughs> Same as last time. It's actually closer to the end of this tangent than I thought. Here you are. <laughs> Good friend. Uh, I just want to make peace with the fact that it's down and gone. It's there. You were supposed to be gone. We mourned you. Okay, maybe all that it ever needs for me to, in order to see landmarks, is for me to experience detachment from them, to let them go. And then they're still there. There's the milepost 31 at a distance as I'm about to leave it behind from my view because of the curve. Nice slope up there. Got a steep drop off on my right side. And on the left side is, you know, a perfect place for a water tower. And I'm coming up to the creek. It's so loud. There was once a water tank tower at mile 30.8 so somewhere around here. During my previous walks here, and again this time, I looked for evidence, mainly concrete foundations for where the tank would have rested on, but I've found nothing. There's a slope with rocks that have fallen down. There's a lot of small rocks here. Yeah, very pretty area. Here's a spot where a recreational trail comes up from the log train trail. Such a pretty area here. 
about mile 30.7 or so back where I came from on the railway the railway is clear <laughs> beyond this junction and the railway is very overgrown here <laughs> I know why it's because people can just go on this wreck road beside it okay let's see what this is like lots of mud holes Here's a spot where the grass and ferns really obscure the railway. I'll walk between the rails here. Okay, I'm between the rails, really. Here you can see the rail. But yeah, we're in a west coast rainforest climate. The plants grow fast and thick. Okay, coming up to an area where there's a Port Alberni story. I remember reading this story a couple of years ago on the Facebook page for the Western Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Society. Those are the good people that restore equipment and locomotives, and a lot of the same people were involved in running the Alberni Pacific Tourist Railway. So I've revisited that Facebook item so that I can give you an accurate description now. Okay, so this happened in 2006 and it had to do with a big rain event in the Alberni Valley. And part of the um, impact of the rains was up on the Beaufort slopes where there are some washouts above McLean Mill. The result was silt that ran down into Katsuxis Creek all the way into the log pond of McLean Mill on the slope below. Now the reason there was so much washout into the creek was because recent logging had taken place above the washout site and so the contractor that did that logging was obliged to um, fix the washout and replace the tracks on the ENN railway. Months later, people from the Industrial Heritage Society saw the site and realized that the job wasn't completed up to good standards or something like that. And so a bunch of Industrial Heritage Society volunteers went up to the site and fixed it themselves. And I believe it's this site that I'm walking at here with the fresh ballast and the exposed ties where the fix up was done. And so I think about that story of good people doing good work whenever I walk up here at this site. It's good to know the history of the people who've made an impact. One of the people from the Industrial Heritage Society on the crew that day was a gentleman named Mr. Campbell and his nickname was Soup and Soup was a big part of the Industrial Heritage Society for his skill and ingenuity and hard work. And Soup passed away a few years ago in summer 2020. And so whenever I walk this area now, I think of the story of the Industrial Heritage Society people, and in particular, I think about Soup and the impact that he had. I never met Soup, but I've heard about him a lot from other people and read about him, and he is a character and legend that I greatly admire. The photographs from 2007 that I used are courtesy of the Western Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Society. Thanks very much for permission to use those. I continue to be pleasantly surprised and very thankful for the clear railway here. I was not expecting this, thanks to the good people who trimmed some of this stuff back. Oh yeah, nice. The fog is rolling in. It's probably going to do this off and on for the next few hours. I like it. Okay, we're about to break out into an open area. 
as a result of some logging close to the line. <laughs> it's just one big bit of gray fog up ahead. Okay, here comes the open area and I'm about to break through a bit of broom guarding this spot. And this is an area that I've looked at from the other end on recent hikes and just thought, oh, here's the start of bad broom. But I thought it was way worse, but it's not. And I'm so happy with this fog. It's cool. It was going to be, well, it is a sunny day above the fog. But this is sure nice. Oh my, wow. That's great. I'm glad I came from there today. That's what I've been missing for two years. Yeah, so I normally go down there, down that road. So there's another tributary of Kitsuxis Creek coming up. I think that's the creek tributary. Yeah, this is very pretty. And here's where I cross that creek. Sound is nice. Ah, back into the trees. Here comes mile post 30. And on the left side is a sign for resume speed going the other way. And beside the mile post 30 is a 10 mile an hour slow order sign. I've got no problems complying with that. Okay, let's keep walking eastward. So, coming up to the trestle. Going into the sunlight that's diffused by the fog. I can hear the creek underneath the trestle. These windfalls just hang around, literally. And this is the end of part one of this video. Part two will show my adventures on this trestle, looking at the waterfall, walking underneath the trestle beside it, and then deciding to bushwhack down the ravine slope. I will see you in the next one.